Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to present our project, Data Analytics Pipeline for AU System. Our team members are Ayush Agarwal, Devya Patel, Mayank Agarwal, Sakshi Sharma, and myself, Sanskriti Agarwal. What is about our project? Our project aim of segregation of operational and non-operational data that are asked in AVO videos and chat messages. Operational data corresponds to the problems in communication between student and the teacher. For example, uh, your video is not visible, your audio is not audible, etc. And non-operational are the data uh, that student asks, for example, doubts. We are working on AVU. AVU is an e-learning platform uh, which helps the instructor to interact or teach the student. We are segregating operational data. How we are doing this? Here we see there are three input data, YouTube link, chat file and video. Selenium is used to extract YouTube chats from the YouTube link. We have worked on many softwares to extract a speech to text. There are a list of sentences which are then passed to a question classifier and we extract the questions. Finally, a name-based classifier is used to predict whether it is operational or non-operational. So now we see that there are three inputs in this pipeline. Since the ABU records videos as well, so firstly, we'll convert the video to their transcripts in order to get the transcripts and then find out what are operational and non-operational questions in that. So what's our approach in that? So firstly, we have the video. Uh, we'll extract the audio from that video file and then the audio will then be converted to its transcript. So there are specific configurations for audio file which are needed to be there in order to successfully convert it into transcripts. Any speech recognition system accepts a file in WAV format. Why WAV format? Because it's lossless and uh, it is uncompressed and it offers a wide range of frequency, um, much more than MP3 files. Also, the sampling rate must be 16,000 hertz and uh, it must be monochannel. Uh, the technologies which are used in order to achieve that, so the, uh, in order to modify the audio files, are PyDub, FFmpeg, and YouTube DL. So what YouTube DL does is it directly downloads a YouTube video, uh, the uh, AV videos which are available on IITB Studio. So those videos are downloaded uh, under these configurations by YouTube DL itself. Uh, now we have the audio. Now we want to convert the audio to its transcript. So there are many services which are used to do that. So uh, some of the proprietary softwares which are very good in order to convert speech to text are a Google API for speech recognition and Gnani API. So these are proprietary softwares. They have a uh, free limit to a certain extent, but after that they charge, uh, charge a certain amount for conversion. There are also open source softwares that can be used. So one, uh, some of them are CMU Sphinx and uh, DeepSpeech. So what's the problem with conversion from speech to text? So all the good speech to text conversion softwares are proprietary. Uh, also the free services, the open source services, they are not trained for Indian accent data. They are trained for foreign accents data. Uh, and most of the videos on AVU are generally by Indian professors. So we need a software that converts Indian accent to uh, transcript. Also the long length of video, since AVU has faculty development programs, so the length, the length of those uh, videos are exceeding one hour to two hour. So uh, converting one hour and two hour video to their transcript is a huge bottleneck in this task. So what's the solution to this problem? There's a deep speech model. This is an open source model. What is deep speech? It's an open source model. Also, a pre-trained model is available, which is trained on foreign accents. So uh, we can use that model in order to uh, achieve our goal. Uh, it's also written in Python, which is a go-to language these days for machine learning tasks. Also, it's based on TensorFlow and a huge community support since Mozilla supports this uh, deep speech uh, model. So it, there's a huge community support offered by Mozilla. So now, how do we adapt this model to uh, support Indian accent? So we'll apply transfer learning. What is transfer learning? So if a certain model is used to uh, perform a task A, we can tweak certain settings in order to uh, make that adaptable to support the task B. So for example, I would like to uh, show that suppose a model is developed to identify a letter E. So uh, supposing for intuition, we have four edges in E, we train the model to identify all these edges. So now if a task B is there, we have to identify F. 
we don't have to train uh, all the edges in order to identify f. We just have to forget the bottom edge in order to identify f. So this is what transfer learning is. And now how transfer learning is uh, adaptable to deep speech. So deep speech has certain layer of neurons. It's a basically a deep learning a neural network based uh, deep speech model. So neural networks as we know have many layers. So we don't have to train every layer. We just have to fix certain layers and train some layers in order to achieve our task. So the last layers will be trained on Indian accent data in order to identify that. The data we are using for that is common voice data set. It has many accent data. So we extract the Indian accent data from that and we train our model on that. So now we are having our transcript generated from that. So there's a huge problem with this transcript. As we are finding operational sentences and non-operational sentences, uh, we must firstly know uh, what the sentences are. In this, we can't see any punctuation. So we need to perform text segmentation on that in order to firstly identify the sentences and then uh, we can use our further pipeline in order to get to know whether these sentences are operational or non-operational. So for that, we are using deep segment. So deep segment is a natural language processing based technique in order to perform text segmentation. It is based on word embeddings. So uh, it is using glove vectors, which are supported by Stanford and sequence to sequence. Also by directional LSTMs are also used to segment these texts. The data source for our pipeline was the, the transcript we get, the, we get from the video. The another uh, source can be the YouTube live chats. So how did we extract the uh, YouTube live chats? Simple, go to the website, copy the messages we want to we want for the analysis, then paste it in a file. But this is easy for a simple like one video or two video. But you cannot do that for hundreds or thousands of video. So you just write a script for it. So this is where Selenium comes to rescue. So Selenium is a tool which is usually used to automate web browsing. Primarily, it was used to automate uh, web applications testing, but nowadays people use it for web scrappings. Selenium is quite popular among programming language. It can be uh, like web browser automation can be done using Selenium in Python, PHP, Java, C, Ruby, etc. So let's see different type of web scrapping. First of all, static web scrapping. Static websites are the uh, websites which do not interact with uh, clients or the servers. So it's pretty easy to scrap the data or get all the data from the website. And there are others, library also like Beautiful Soup and Scrappy, which can be used to scrap the data, same as Selenium. But what makes it different from the other Beautiful Soup and Scrappy is that it can also uh, scrap dynamic content. It is like only the one, it is only the a unique tool which can be used to scrap dynamic content. So you can like go to a website, uh, automate form filling and apply it. Then you can ex uh, scrap the YouTube live chats, comments. You can even get the all the photos of a user on Instagram. Which you will have to uh, like give some time to scrap the data. So how we use Selenium in our project. Uh, first of all, uh, the whole uh, the whole process from starting a video to scra uh, scraping down the relevant messages is all fu uh, fully automated. So if you run a Selenium script for around 10 videos, it will take around 20 minutes because of the ads in the YouTube. So when the video starts, uh, at the beginning, the live chats are not loaded. So you have to go to the end of the video so, so the like, la live chats can, can be uh, loaded. Once you go to the end of the video, then you have to change from main YouTube iframe to the sub iframe, the live chats. Then only you will be able to extract the data from the live chats. And once you do that, then you can just use ID and class reference to get the messages and author's name. So this is the result we obtained from scraping the data. Um, OK, so now uh, you saw in the flowchart there were three input channels. The third one was. Uh, uh, just uh, chat a view chat files which are in CSV format which can be read using Python that's uh, no problem okay uh, so now we have these three uh, channels and we have a now we have a list of sentences right now what are we going to do with it we have the dough now we have to you know process it so uh, what we do is we pass it through something called a question classifier so what question classifier does is uh, so it takes a sentence and it uh, tells the probability of that sentence being a question so the, like if you imagine it as a black box, this is what it does. 
So the first intuitive approach you can think of is if the sentence has a question mark at the end, it's a question. That's pretty, uh, yeah, you know, the first approach you'd think of. But the problem is those sentences which don't have a question mark at the end. We are uh, doing deep segment, we are doing scraping. Now all of those doesn't guarantee us sentences with only questions. We have to do something to uh, overcome that. So uh, what we do is we take help of deep learning. So if you expand the question classifier, it will look something like this inside. There is some pre-processing and there are some layers. We'll go through uh, them one by one. So uh, pre-processing basically what you do, if you, if you hear a sentence, you'll, you'll uh, not think of the words which you don't care about. You'll take the keywords and you'll, okay, that's what he meant. That's what did happening here. It's the processing done before processing. That's why it's called pre-processing and then, okay. So now uh, we have a sentence, uh, we, but we cannot feed it to a computer, right? A sentence, uh, it cannot do anything. But if you give it numbers, it can do wonders. So we have to find some way to convert this sentence into numbers. So this we do it in a very ingenious way called uh, glove vectors. So uh, glove vectors are something, uh, it's actually mapping a word to a vector in high dimensional space. Uh, now by high dimensional, I'm telling 100 dimension, 200 dimensions. Actually, this picture can be a qu quite misleading because it's only in 2D. Uh, imagining 100, is, 100 dimensions is beyond our capacity. So, uh, but the glove vectors are so beautiful that you can see, now you have a, a vector say king, you can subtract man from that and add woman and you'll get queen. You see the power it has to, con to uh, encase semantic meaning. Similar words will occupy nearby distance uh, in the vector space. So that's great work done by uh, Saucher and his team at Stanford. This is the layer, that was the first layer. Now this layer is where actual learning happens. Now I don't have time, that guy's ring well, but uh, what it basically does is uh, it, it learns from its mistakes, something like that. Uh, this analogy has been used many times, so I'm just gonna state that. It's the how humans learn. If uh, you're shown an unknown picture, uh, first time you'll guess something random. And I'll say, okay, this is not that, that is something else. And then you'll correct yourself. That's what is happening here. But that are normal neural networks. This has an addition of a feature where it also learns from its context vectors, what's near it. So these last two neurons are just for converting these numbers into probability. The first neuron will say, what is the probability of it being a question? The second will say the probability of it not being a question. Now, as we are extracting the questions, uh, we'll use NAPE-based to uh, segregate operational and non-operational. NAPE-based is a, uses a probabilistic algorithm and is a classification technique. It is NAPE because we assume that each word is independent of other ones in a sentence. There are three types of naive base. First one is Gaussian naive base. Second one is multinomial. And the third one is Bernoulli. In our project, we have used multinomial naive base because the features which we use for extraction or prediction are, uh, assumes discrete value. It works very well on text classification. Now coming to the Im implementation of knife base, as an input, we give a CSV file which contains of eight to nine columns, out of which only two are important. First one is sentences. This column consists of chat between the instructor and the student. The second column is of label, where N stands for non-operational and O stands for operational. For pre-processing of data, we have used count vectorizer and TF-IDF transformer. Count vectorizer tokenizes the word for a, to convert it into a numerical form. And TF-IDF transformer reduces the impact of words which occur more frequently in a data. Now the results are here. Like for first one, how to determine symptoms of fever. Knife base have classified is it as non-operational. And the second one, am I visible, is operational. The accuracy of this model is 86%. For the future work, deep speech. If we have more data on Indian accent, we can get better results using deep speech. As we segregated the non-operational and operational queries by knowing how many operational uh, problems a center is facing, we can give more equipment maintenance to that particular center. And the last one, like we have worked on the AVU charts and there the log and charts, chart files were overwritten, they were not saved. So we have very less data. So by saving them, we can get ample of data and uh, get better analysis. I think you should have put a lot of examples 
So all those examples that you have yeah. do not convey anything of uh, the project. Which part do you want an example? All. I can just give. Uh, no, no, you don't have to give. You have to you, you, see when you are when you are explaining. See, uh, you go to the glow vector. Yeah. This is your live example. By live example, what? Do you the chat that you analyze, then you get this. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, the the problem so, is. So, uh, sir, I mean, we cannot map hundred dimensions you are, you are, here. You are actually giving same examples which are being covered in many many websites and uh, books sir, and textbooks. Sir, the problem is we cannot. And we you are, are using. You are covering the same techniques which people have heard for thousands of uh, times. Yeah, yes, sir. So the problem is we don't have the resources okay, to map hundred dimensions. How much time here. you will take for the demo? One minute. One minute. One minute. Okay, one minute. This is just opening up the server. Okay, and then we go to localhost. Yeah, uh, we have multiple, as we said, we have three channels. So the first channel is for uh, YouTube live scraping. So, um, and the second is for the AV chat list. And this is for uh, converting video to audio. And it play, audio to transcript. Okay. Play a pie chart and the same thing for others also, wherein we are given a ratio of non-operational and operational. What is the actual sentence? This is done over a whole data set, a whole chat file, one yes. whole recording, it scrapes. So and it for works. that example, what is what are those sentences which are, so you want to say that uh, new equipment is required, a remote center and all those things. Yeah. So how will you say that? We can see the chat transcript. So you want me to go through the chat, why this you are required? Now this is the result from the chat transcript. So those are the sentences. For example, sir, will you please explain what should be monitored? This will be classified as non-operational because it's a uh, legit doubt. So this is what is displayed for the user, or no? Sir, user here has multiple terms. Which user? See, when you can scrape, when you can read some data, yeah. you know exactly which are the sentences, right? So this is for like for AVU currently has remote centers all over India. No, I'm not talking about AVU. I'm talking about you are able to read sentences. Yeah. Right. Yes. You are able to put feed it to your model. Yes. That means you know which is that ten percent is operational and huh. which is ninety percent is non-operational. Non Whatever. Oh. Point eight, point five. But can you display these operational sentences? Means which on, are on your interfaces. As, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, so this is what he is asking. So sir, that's, the that's just an implementation issue. If uh, that is what the client requires, but uh, so usually what the client requires is he doesn't want to see. Okay, this sentence is classified as that. What it needs a pie graph wherein okay these many are operational. That means okay uh, we need to put more resources here because okay. uh, oh no, like ninety percent of this data is operational. Okay, okay. So uh, do you have a database? Uh, yeah. uh, that that was the problem where you said the log files were not being stored till okay. recently. So yeah, we took a small data uh, from log files and we have done so it So you that. process this text, you mm -hmm. identify which one is operational and which, which one is not operational and then you what, uh, what you have done with this data? So you simply made the pie chart? Yeah, so yes. that's the future scope. So this is till now, till now is that. Then no, but uh, if you have identified, you can simply put operational in front of the text and make because it's, it's not something that need uh, extra work you have already done yeah, that work. but like is there is no specific i have it on my no that's okay that but time. so the thing is if if on the text file if operational is written let us say yes then one who is managing these things rather than simply knowing 18 percent operational is required search for operational if he has to manually do it search for yeah, operation, but and if identify say, the two if rules. a manager here who is say, looking over all remote centers, mm -hmm. would he want to rather at one remote center see each text as operational or each remote center as one pie graph which says him that this percentage is operational, this no, percentage see, is not operational. I, I do not think that's much more knowing helpful, right? some some percentage operational matters for me. What matters for me? Who needs what? What yeah. to do now? Yes. Yeah, so,
Overall only. Okay. So then, let us say if I come to know 18 percent, then what to do after that? Yeah, you deploy resources. I think a person needs to know what are the problems. Yes, Rather so than whether if there are more person. operational, that means. So so then, what you have done is not useful. So now we have an operation. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So there now we'll so assume we have hundred. No, you are you are talking. You have taken that. There's some purpose. What yes. is the motivation for this project? Uh, for example, there is one remote center at Kolkata. Okay, and there are many over there. Here a manager is sitting who is supposed to say them that your audio devices are not working. Go and check it. So this data will help them. Ninety percent operational. That's a huge amount. You are having much more audio video problems than others. The service should be you're, deployed there. You are repeating the same thing again and again. Yes, sir, but the question okay, is... It's fine, fine. Thank you. One question I have. Yes. In the initial part of your slides, you said uh, you convert some audio to video, uh, transcript using Sphinx or Google API. Uh, uh, yes. So, and after that, you, you, you do something to punctuate it. Yes. So what was that and what is this? Uh, How is it connected? Okay, so I didn't the get problem the connection is, between those two. Things. Yeah, so audio is like complete channel, right? Yeah. We convert the whole thing to transcript. Yeah. Now there is no way to directly convert with pauses. Like okay. if someone is speaking. No, no, no. So then after that, how does this chat reply come into picture? So, uh, there are multiple channels of input. So mm -hmm. one of them is video. Okay. So okay. from videos, we also get sentences. So those sentences so, are also passed okay, through okay. this, and uh, we also get. So you showed a sample of one of the live chat uh, replies. You, yeah. I mean that is easy to take because you can scrape it. Yeah. yeah. But you did not show any sample about the one that was you know converted with Sphinx and then punctuated with that other machine learning yeah. tool. Okay, so the, the, the format in which data will be uh, present after passing through every uh, af every channel will yeah. be the same structure. No, so I was really interested in seeing you showed a uh, you know block whole block of text without punctuation and I was really interested in seeing how you punctuated it and what was the result. Yeah, so yeah. so yeah. anyway that's okay that's okay. So the model which was used was deep segment so that segments the text basically. We are not interested in the model, we are interested in your work. Thank you sir.